Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, open our eyes that we might see, our ears that we might hear, and our hearts that we might respond to your word this day and always as you lead and guide our actions, our steps, our words, and our deeds. Amen. Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. It's a familiar passage, verses 11 through 18. Listen, hear, and receive God's word for us this morning. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was sitting there as Miss Sarah was sharing the children's message, thinking that I came about this close to reading this scripture passage to you all this morning and then inviting you to talk among yourselves. (laughs) And then God said, no, I have a word. (laughs) Thanks be to God. Again, this is a familiar passage where Jesus says to those who are listening, judging, and metaphorically without sight, I am the good or the model shepherd. The model shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And Jesus says something else in this particular discourse that may typically go unnoticed or may just be discounted. Jesus said, I have other sheep who do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. Did you hear that? I have other sheep who do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. That's a statement to ponder, particularly since in the previous chapter of John, Jesus healed a man who was blind from his birth. And it was presumed that kindness had been caused by the sins of his parents. This man was living a blind experience and existing on the margins of society, uh, society, ostracized and begging for sustenance. However, the blind man was not the only one without sight. In the estimation and sight of Jesus' disciples, who were the first to query about the blind man's about the blind man and the religious leaders who took exception to Jesus healing on the Sabbath the man living with blindness and Jesus were both the others not really members of the Pharisaic fold for they were not like the Pharisees who thought themselves to be the standard you see the term Pharisees literally means one who is separated separated from the Gentiles ritual impurities and from irreligious Jews Take that in for a moment as we run to examine today's text. We are living in a time when we too have been separated out of necessity. However, we are also living in a time when some perceive that their lives, their rituals, their skin color is the standard by which others should be judged and that anyone who deviates from those things is the other. It bears repeating. Jesus said, I have sheep that do not belong to this fold. 
I must bring them a vernacular. More frequently than not, the word other is used pejoratively, denoting or identifying people that one group thinks of as less than, apart from, or different. Other is sometimes used to disparage, insult, belittle, marginalize, oppress, and disenfranchise. How many states are rushing to rewrite their voting laws to negatively impact communities of color? And how is it that the Supreme Court just upheld Arizona's new Jim Crow era voting law? On this independent of living and LGBTQIA plus experience, women to a lesser but still some extent, people who are other abled, people living with income, educational, and employment insufficiency, as well as those who are living with addiction and other illnesses that are sometimes deemed as their fault. You know, people living with HIV, AIDS, mental illness, the list is exhaustive and exhausting. We sometimes see those people as broken, and yet Jesus claimed the broken the oppressed, the marginalized, and the ill. And while we're on the subject, Jesus acknowledged that there are different folds, and as the good or model shepherd, he would bring them also so there would be one flock. Not only have we allowed our ethnic, racial, financial standing, gender identities, and other identifiers to separate us, we have allowed our faith traditions, our denominational affiliations, and other religious practices to separate us from one another. We have allowed our diversity, which God loves, to negate the fact that we are wonderfully and fearfully created by God. Just recently, it was reported that mass graves of First Nations children were found in Canada. Children who were separated from their families in order to indoctrinate them that they might be more like the Europeans who colonized their country and ours. Just to name two. The same occurred in these United States of America and other countries all over the world. Today, rather than working to heal hurts, to bridge the divide, acknowledge our sin as a country, people are resisting and denying the American story, encouraging people to, of color to just get over it. But how do you get over trauma that has manifested itself in your very DNA? The realities of the genocide of millions of First Nation and indigenous people of millions of people ripped from their country of origin, deemed as nothing more than chattel or property, enslaved and still seen as less than, undeserving and not American, enacting voting laws that disenfranchise, trying repeatedly to dismantle affordable health care and housing, equal education, access to nutritious food for all, and being victimized by an unjust justice system. The examples of othering people are plentiful and must be told if we are to ever repent and repair. God calls us as a people of God to repent and repair, and we can only do that when we begin to tell the truth. I have sheep that are not of this fold. Jesus specialized in walking with those who were defined and seen as other. Jesus spent his time righting the religious and political wrongs, enacting a new law, love, <laughs> love for one another as he loves each and every one of us. Jesus walked in the world healing the sick, the brokenhearted, restoring the ostracized and marginalized, empowering the powerless, destroying unjust laws and injustices, and establishing a new standard based on bringing people who are on the outside on the inside. But lest we get it twisted, Jesus did not say sit in your synagogues or your churches insisting that those Jewish or our fold come in 
Jesus went out. Jesus went out into the highways and byways. Jesus lived among and loved the people. One commentator states, the life of the shepherd was anything but picturesque. It was dangerous, risky, and menial. Shepherds were rough around the edges, spending time in the fields, you get that, rather than polite society. Shepherds went out into the fields. They weren't sitting around sipping tea in polite society. For Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. For him to say that would have been an affront to the religious elite and the educated of his day. That claim still has an edge to it. This commentator says that a modern day equivalent of that saying might be equal or equivalent to Jesus for Jesus to say, I am the good migrant worker. End of quote. I have other sheep who are not of this flock. I must bring them also. The idea of Jesus bringing diverse and different flocks into one fold has social justice implications. It is provocative. It's dangerous risk and risky, and it denotes the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that are so listed in the Constitution of these United States of America. And that should be true for everyone, regardless of their race, their creed, ethnicity, country of origin, class or educational attainment, gender or gender identity. It's comforting and it's challenging to imagine one universal church because it is self-serving to act as if our flock is the prototype by which all others should be judged. And yet it's easier to resist allowing God to change, transform, and open us up to new possibilities, new ways of being the people of God. And so our prayer should be, open our eyes, Lord God, that we might see, truly see the logs of classism, racism, supremacy, sexism, bias, and prejudice in our own eyes. Lord, we're blind. Help us to see. Commentator Stephen Cooper says, the world surely will perish if its inhabitants continue to pursue narrow forms of self-definitions, identities based on nation, class, race, and gender. The voice of Christ calls out to all the others just as it calls out to us. Thus, now is the time to examine our attitudes, practices, and behaviors that keep us safe from the concerns and the needs of Christ's other sheep. Beloved, the model shepherd, who is Christ Jesus alone, gave his life out of his unconditional and everlasting love for us. Christ is the only model shepherd. Get that. Those of us who stand and proclaim, we're under shepherds. We're sheep just like you. We're fallible and we make mistakes. We sin. And just like you, it is contingent upon us to go to God and confess our sins, to repent and turn around and to allow God to change our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our deeds. Christ is the model shepherd. We're all the other to someone made in the image of God, yet unique, diverse, and the recipients of God's mercy, grace, acceptance, and love. May all of God's sheep be purveyors of the same as we go out recognizing that there are many flocks, but there is only one shepherd who enfolds us into one. People of God, may it be so. May it be so. Amen.